Hi gang, Jeff Mackler once again, and today I am mighty pumped to take a look at this War of Mine, the board game. Designed by Michael Oratz, hopefully I got that right, and Jacob Wisniewski. This is from Galactic Games, and it's in conjunction with 11-Bit Studios, who did the video game. And I do believe it's available in North America through Ares Games. If you're not familiar with This War of Mine, the video game, and I feel weird calling it a video game because the messages within the game are very, very big, very important, and really does open people's eyes up to the real horrors of war, especially for Americans who haven't had to experience anything like that since, say, the American Civil War, where they have to worry about a city being occupied or opposing forces fighting over their city. And this War of Mine, the board game, aims to capture the feel of the video game. And word on the street is it has done a fantastic job of that. It is for one to six players, ages 18 and up. And it's important that I do mention they recommend 18 and up because there are going to be very, very mature themes to the game and some very, very sticky moral and ethical choices to be made while playing the game. Because what happens is each of the players is representing, I don't want to say survivors, because it's not sort of like a zombie apocalypse or anything like that. They're just civilians who are caught in the midst of effectively a civil war that's taking place in their country and the city is just under siege. And it's not as if either side is right or wrong in this conflict because as civilians that really doesn't matter. As a civilian you're just looking to survive. And I do understand that the game itself really doesn't require you to crack open the rule book and, and read through a lot of pages that you're able to kind of jump into the game pretty easily. It does take anywhere from about 45 minutes to two hours to complete. And there is no conflict between the players. I do believe there's no victory points either. Essentially, all you're looking to do is be able to survive until a ceasefire is agreed upon. All right, so enough of the background. Let's get on in and take a look to see what we've got when we take everything outside the box. Okay, first off, we have a book of scripts. And I'll just flip real quickly through. We're not going to take a deep dive into this book because I do believe there's something like 1,900 different events. Yep, see, look at that. Look at all that all the different options that players are going to have to choose from, or really uh, dilemmas that they're going to have to take on head on. So there's the book of scripts. So we've got that. And we've got an advertisement, some of the fine galactic games that are out there. I believe all of these are available from Aries Games here in North America. So we've got that, very cool. And uh, I do believe um, Galacta is uh, a Polish company. We've got the journal. I believe the journal are the rules. So we've got setup. We've got morning, ac morning. we've got day actions, dusk, evening, uh, a lot is scavenging. A lot of what takes place in the game, at least in the video game, is you're really just looking to try to go out and scavenge food and supplies and craft items that are just going to get you through the next day. And remember, not everyone is going to be the sort of humanitarian that you may be. So you have other people trying to get into your, your safe house, your stronghold, uh, trying to take what you've got. There's a save, looks like some save sheets. 
So we've got a few of these. It looks like, yep, they're dual-sided. Got that. Got a baggie here. A couple of baggies, actually. The last day using the scenarios. Endless nights. And we've got probably quite a lot of tokens. But as I mentioned, this is this isn't like a happy-go-lucky kind of game. This isn't the sort of game that you're gonna want to break out with, you know, grandma and say, "Oh, come on, grandma, play this war of mine." Oh, well, okay, maybe I I won't say that because <laughs> I'm sure there's actually some grandparents out there who are big into um, heavy, meaty games. But if you look right there, misery, some misery counters, wounds. Some weapons here, knives, guitar, shovel. And these are dual-sided. Got hunger, illness, more misery. Some more weapons. Cold, raw food. Fatigue. More weapons. Well, these are really nice. This looks like this is really nicely done. Then we've got, I believe it's a pretty big board. I'm going to take that off to the side. I'll probably have to bust out the old iPhone as usual to get in and take a look. We got some minis, we got decks of cards. Uh, I'm going to take a guess. These Probably go on the miniatures to designate who's each player. I'm not sure. We'll take a look. Got some other markers here. Looks like wood. These might be barricades. Got some gear tokens as well. Got some custom dice. So far, it looks like the production quality on this is. Pretty phenomenal. Okay, so it looks like we've got just a standard 10 cider, and then we've got some unique dice. Maybe this is a combat die, because I'm seeing knives, uh, a hatchet. Well, this looks like this might be for firearms. I'll take a guess. This is like a melee dice, and this is a fire combat die. And then, oh, this might be unarmed combat. Because it's got the fists. Hmm. Interesting. Very, very interesting. So let me pop these back in the bag. Got the miniatures. Let's take a look at some of these miniatures here. Hmm. Very nice. Not sure if... The camera is picking up all the detail, but these are uh, pretty nice, especially when you consider they, you know, they are plastic, and they're not soft plastic, so that's cool too. So you don't have to go through any additional steps as far as priming them. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these back in here. And I'm going to actually put them out on the game board so we can kind of get a zoom in. Better zoom in on these when I take a look at the board. And then we've got a multitude of decks of cards. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see um, more than just one deck in here. And it looks as if, yes, they're easy opening. Sweet. So we've got Residence Night Raids. I'm going to take these, take a guess, these are the main characters here. And then we've got, looks like a variety of stuff. Okay, so let me crack open these decks and we're going to get a look at these. I got to be honest, I can't wait to get this to the table. My nephew Cameron, is um, he's familiar with the video game, but I, I don't think he's played it much. He's super pumped to check this out. And uh, I'm sure some of his friends that are part of the gaming gang will dig this too. But... I'll stop rambling on and I'll go open these up so we can take a look. All 
right, we've got these various decks. I'm just going to lay some of them down here. And before I start looking at the cards, I just want to point out very quickly, and I did mention this uh, in my Custom Heroes unboxing, uh, Custom Heroes from AEG. Some folks out there, they're not all overly keen on my unboxing videos because I tend to not do research on the game outside of you know, usual sell sheet stuff that you'll see from companies. Uh, and the reason being is one, I don't have time to do a lot of research on the various games because some people who watch these videos don't realize that the Gaming Gang website actually has <laughs> something like 6,500 articles and things like that that uh, I am mainly the author of and doing news and things like that. And uh, the other reason why I don't is I like to be surprised when I open up the box. I, I like to sit there and go, whoa, look at that, or hmm, I'm surprised they went with this decision component-wise. But anyway, so it, it does look like, yes, these are the, the actual main characters, and it's showing the miniature that you're going to utilize. And there's prowess, empathy, and it looks like spirits. Oh, okay, so there's just one side here. Africa, the cat burglar, Boris. Now, interestingly enough, we see black and red. So I'm taking guess maybe red are people who have uh, better combat skills. Bruno, the TV host and chef. Amelia, the lawyer. Katya, the reporter. Garage owner, firefighter, soccer player. Deserter, yep, I'm taking a guess, yep, that's got to be some sort of a combat value or factor, modifier, what have you. Okay, so there's the characters. Then, ah, exploration. This would probably be a good idea if I looked at the back, A eh, gang? <laughs> well, like I said, I'm really excited to see what's in this, so I'm kind of like, oh, hey, cool. Okay, so we got Fate. Exploration. And I don't want to look at a lot of these cards. I just want to kind of give you an idea because, once again, you want surprises. So, Fate, Raise the Wounds. I was saying, okay, so Raise Illness of All Ill ch Characters. I almost said children. I'm thinking of the, the add on to the video game that added children, which was just heartbreaking. Very cool, very, uh, okay, maybe not cool, but it was really, really good, but it is pretty heartbreaking. So it's basically saying, okay, do this, and if cold, do this. Okay. All right, so we've got fate. There may be more fate cards. Exploration. Climb up. Door. Search the furniture. Tough luck. Aha. Uh -huh. These look like these might be uh, much uh, more difficult challenges to get past as far as exploration. Got some blank cards in here. Pop those down. Might as well put the characters on top here. Okay, so we got residence, locations, events. Just take a peek. Some of the resident civilians, deserters, hobos, rats, reality impact. Okay. Okay, locations. Abandoned cottage, central square, church, city hospital. Tell you what you might be able to find. I guess these are some of the events for exploration, rare findings. Wow, it looks like there's just loads of detail in this game. Which, I'm one of these people, I, you know, I really love big, epic games. Even, even if they don't take hours to play, just, just the whole epic feel of a game. And this really does strike me 
as that's what this is going to be. So chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. So I'm guessing these are probably good timing cards that you'll put into a deck. Yep, maybe. <laughs> Ceasefire, these are the events. Contagious illness, crime on the rise, airdrop. Oh, sweet, that helps. All right, so got these. Pop those in. Okay, what do we got in this deck? Got night raids. And narrative actions. Colors. Huh. Okay. Take a look at night raids. This is the. These are the people who are trying to break into your your home, your your safe house. Uh, trying to take what you've got. Got that there. Oh, I guess these are, well, these are dual-sided. Oh, okay. So I'm going to take a guess that these are probably um, items that you're going to be able to add to your safe house. And you may just have these off to the side and just um, go through when you want to build it. And it looks like this is what you need. It's going to tell you what you have to have to be able to build it. Very cool. Narrative actions. Well, we got these colors. I'm not, I have absolutely no clue what those would represent. Of course, I am going to have a review of this war of mine, the board game, once uh, we get it to the table three times. That's how I do my reviews. I do not review games based on a single playthrough. Because you'd be amazed how many times people, um, including myself, misread a rule or don't catch a rule. And you play a game and you're thinking, wow, that game just wasn't as good as I was hoping. And then it turns out, well, that's because you were playing it wrong. All right, what we got in here? Rubble. Oh, okay. So you're going to dig through rubble. Maybe you can find some stuff. Wow, there's just, man, it just keeps going on and on and on. Looks like we've got bars, closed door, furniture. Ah, oh, these are, we saw some of those um, actions where it was like search furniture. So I guess you would draw these cards to find out what you found. And then... Final objective. Oh, wow. Okay. I wonder if there's more than one final objective. Findings. Just Once again, like I said, I don't want to <laughs> spoil any surprises. We're just kind of taking a peek. We got visitors. Jeez. Here's the chapter objectives. Okay, so we got visitors. So these are um, I believe because even though you have a main character, I believe you also have other um, civilians that will become part of your group. Uh, I don't want to say they're not necessarily NPCs, but it's very possible that um, what they do is they probably increase or decrease your survivability. Probably different factors. So we've got chapter objectives, final objective. Final objective is, yes, survive. Get to the end of the game. So we've got that. And then chapter objectives, you must draw these because it looks like the game is played in three chapters. Man, this is just... I'm super impressed, and another reason why I'm super impressed is because of the the price point of this game, which I'll discuss at the end of the unboxing here. But um, I'm going to put some of this stuff away, and then I'm going to take a look at the map, as well as the miniatures here. So you know what? Why don't I do that right now? I have laid out the board, and I've also placed the miniatures on the board as well. 
And the first thing I did notice as I opened up this mounted board is it's got two sides. It's dual sided. So there's actually an advanced game as well. I'm just taking a look at the, the basic side of the board. And as just as I kind of pan around through it, if you recall, we had all those various different decks of cards. Looks like we've got spots available for really all those decks, like the color cards, narrative actions, fate, ideas, fittings, characters. I wonder if it's possible, yeah, maybe you can bring in more of the main characters too. That's a possibility because as I mentioned before, you're not competing against each other. You're just trying to get some civilians to survive. So we've got furniture, rubble, closed door, heap. So I'm guessing that those other decks are going to go in there too. And for those of you who've played the video game, this probably looks awfully familiar. <laughs> this side view, sleeping on the floor, poking about. Yeah, really nice, good sized board here. And then we've got the miniatures. These are the 12 miniatures. Let's see if we can get in a bit, show off some of the detail. And the pause is because the lighting is creating way more shadow. But these are the dozen miniatures that come with the game as well. Very, very impressive. I mean, seriously, hats off to Galactic Games because this looks phenomenal. All right, so we've got the dice the various decks of cards, the markers, more markers as well. We've got the even dozen miniatures for the main characters. We've got the various tokens and markers here. Got a bit of a, a scenario card. A couple of baggies, the save sheet. The journal, the book of scripts, and the map, and the cool games, cool other games from Collecta. And that is what we find when we take everything from This War of Mine, the board game, outside the box. If you'd like to learn more about This War of Mine, the board game, and go to Galacta's site, but I do believe... I'm not positive if there's a translation on their site or not. Because as I mentioned, I believe this is uh, Galact is a Polish company. I do believe this War of Mine, the board game, is available right now. Uh, I know you can order it online. I'm not positive if, it, if it's arrived in your friendly local game stores just yet. I did mention one of the things that I found very, very impressive about this is this game box is jam-packed. And the MSRP on this War of Mine, the board game, is $69 and I believe 90 cents, which is a little odd. But that seems like an awfully good deal for what we've got in this box. And as I mentioned before, this is getting a lot of really good buzz from avenues that you wouldn't expect to hear about board games from, too. Before I sign off, I just want to mention, if you dig our unboxing videos or if you happen to like the Gaming Gang website, which I know a lot of people don't realize there's a website out there. It's not just me doing videos on YouTube. Be sure to uh, support the Gaming Gang on our Patreon page. And we've got some cool giveaways coming up that uh, people might kind of dig. Anyway, once again, I am Jeff McAleer, and for the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV, come on, by now you know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. And until next time, thanks for watching.